The Electoral College is what actually elects the president. We all think we do. We don't really. What we do is we vote for these people. These people are the ones who actually have the votes that actuate everything that make it happen. Each state selects its electors from a bunch of the good citizenry of that state, and they're proportional by the size of the congressional delegation from the states. For example, all of your Congress members and your senators combined produce the number of electoral votes you get in your state. So, California gets a whole lot, Texas gets a lot, Montana, North Dakota, not so much. The behavior of the electors is one of the great acts of trust in this country, because only in a few places are they actually bound to what the people in the population This is say. amazing. They can change their mind, and there have been rare occasions in which so electors actually, have gone the popular vote is not the one that elects the president. One of the big reasons you always hear for the Electoral College is that it evens out power a little bit. If you just had a popular vote, then the most populous states would really control That's why Al Gore didn't get elected. He had the popular vote, but George Bush had the electoral vote. And beyond that, all the campaigning would only happen in giant population centers. The biggest con you hear is that it can override the popular vote. People can triangulate the electoral votes and actually win the presidency when most of the people in the country do not want that person in the Oval Office. <laughs> if neither candidate can get at least 270 electoral votes, which is what you need to win, then everything goes wild in this country, principally because the decision then falls to the How that ever happen? They would have to hash it out there looking at the top presidential candidates and they would decide who should be the president. And, by the way, each state just gets one vote then, so Idaho would have just as much punch as Florida or New York. Here's the great part, though. The Senate selects the vice president after that happens. That means that with the House now controlled by Republicans and the Senate now controlled by Democrats, you very well could wind up, if you had a tie, with Mitt Romney as president and Joe Biden as vice president. 